Get ready. I mean, get ready, 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 ready. It's time to motivate, inspire, transform. Hand towards your future. Reach for the stars. Genesis of change. It's from within. When you learn to leave, everyone wins. All right, Mitties, welcome to Intentional Leadership Powered by Academy of Dallas and Bear County Academy. We are excited today because we have a special guest. We have Miss Cynthia Triggs, but I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell you her position and what she does. Well, thank you, Dr. Ross. I am Cynthia Triggs, CEO and founder of Evolution Academy Charter School. We are a dropout recovery charter school based in Richardson, Beaumont, and Houston by way of Spring, Texas. Wow, you have a lot of places to visit and a lot of we things have to go a on. Lot, I, we are, I have a lot of places to visit. <laughs> I have a lot of places. So I know you stay really, really busy. It, it It's busy. Right, it's absolutely. Busy, but it's good busy. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Anytime you're impacting youngsters, that's good work. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about today specifically <laughs> as it relates to your population that you serve. Okay. Um, okay. So just kind of talk about uh, the charter school. Tell me specifically exactly uh, the population that you're currently serving because we know that charters um, – Across the uh, across Texas, but also across the nation, are doing phenomenal work, and they focus on specific areas or specific needs as a part of that charter. So, talk to us about a little bit about the charter school and, and the students that you're serving. Well, we have um, a different sort of niche. Evolution Academy actually started 20 years ago. Wow, 2002. Wow, that was our first. Um, well, 2003 was the first graduating cohort, but we opened our doors 2002. To 2003, with an intention of serving those students who had either dropped out of school, at risk of dropping out, or those that just wanted a non-traditional method of instruction. And so that's the, those are the students that we seek if you have um, a need for credit recovery or if you have a need to accelerate. Um, we intentionally work with those students and manage them literally to the stage Wow! to yes. gain their high school diploma. Well, t- talk to me, you, when you say drop out recovery, kind of mm-hmm. explain to the uh, audience of MITES, and I call uh, my audience MITES. Mm-hmm. It's an um, acronym from MIT, Motivate, uh-huh. Inspire, Transform. Okay. And I am their mentor, and okay. they're my MIT. Okay. okay. Yes. I don't so like talk that. to talk to me specifically about you know the purpose and how drop drop out recovery plays a part uh, within the uh, the district. Okay. So when you think about drop out recovery, what 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 makes a student a dropout? First of all, mm-hmm. is every single year a student enrolls in a campus. If that student does not return to that campus the next year or the following year, there's a window Mm -hmm. of about two weeks that you search for the student to determine whether or not or their whereabouts. Sometimes they may have moved. Sometimes they may have um, transitioned to um, another um, Texas school. Mm -hmm. And in um, that regard, not really follow the withdrawal process gotcha. and so we locate we have we have that amount of time to locate those students if those students are not located they are deemed dropouts and that impacts your campus and your dropout rate and so that's the reason why it is super important you know you think about we we always hear snapshot day snapshot day right. that last friday in october mm-hmm. But really, it's the first three weeks or so yeah, absolutely. Of, of, of the beginning of the school year that you're having to find what we call those no-shows, those drop, those students who potentially could become dropouts. And so when that happens, they're on this list. 
And so based on based upon that, um, you're constantly kind of on, you know, that little merry go round finding them right. and um, trying to identify their whereabouts and really getting them back within that three week window. It's a small amount of time. Mm-hmm. And so we um, we spend quite a bit of time taking in half of our population that we serve because we typically graduate about 400 students a year. Wow. And we have um, an enrollment on an average of about 800, but because we're open entry, open exit, Mm -hmm. kids come throughout the year. So it's not uncommon for us to serve, I think, our our, our peak is we've served about maybe 1,500 to 1,700 because of the high mobility rate and kids, you know, not really sure if they, you know, you grab them, you, you, you capture their attention, you try to get them to the finish point. But they have other things that they turn their attention to, work and family, um, being a, you know, sometimes the provider, the sole provider Correct. of their of their family. And then, you know, some if just sometimes it's just self inflicted and I don't want to do school. So there's a lot of motivating and um I can't speak to the amount of um support that the staff, you know, have to be ready to to provide. And so, you know, kudos to the to the staff members. Absolutely. Of um just educators, period. But, you know, I kind of always say um, I have the best staff this side of Texas because <laughs> this side of heaven, I'm sorry, <laughs> right. because they they really do. Um, they 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 sign up for not just um, serving as educators, but also serving as mentors, mommies, aunties, all of um, that, all of that mm-hmm. because we find that, you know, that nurturing environment is um, a must to really um, get buy-in because many adults have let a lot of our students down. And they're, they're major, um, there's some trust factors that go according, um, you know, to that. And so um, literally when I say we're, we're, we're managing Every single student, as they walk through the door, developing that graduation plan, not only that, looking, you know, five to ten years from now, um, what does college career or military readiness look like mm-hmm. for you? Is that something that you're interested in? Because if we turn them loose without a plan, without an opportunity, um, what we're doing is we're sending them into poverty. Absolutely. That's kind of um, our take, you know. So we don't we don't so much see the little bitty ones like you do. You get the little babies. I do. <laughs> you I get do. the little baby. We get the big kids. Yeah. And um, and we we try to look at ways that we are going to be impactful as they're leaving us, and it, it, it's it's so rewarding. It's hard work, but it's good work. And it's rewarding work. And um, as the, um, the 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 saying goes, I'm not tired yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I've heard that. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, sung yeah. so many times. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> it, it's a lot to unpack in some of the, the, the things that you stated. And I was I'm doing my best to listen attentively mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I want to capture quite a bit of it. But one of the things that I, I specifically heard you talk about was um, – the mentoring piece or the relationship building Mm -hmm. with the students from the teachers and the staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, um, and I'm going to let you speak to that, and also the work that's put in on the front end to identify those students that you're going to actually reach Mm -hmm. um, that could go go in that particular pipeline or what have you. Uh, So talk to to me specifically about about that aspect of it, you know, the relationship building, because there's a part part of – and the other part of that was, and I want to go back to your leadership as superintendent, mm-hmm. identifying that you have to do what you just did. We have to be as uh, superintendents. And this is for my mentee, so they understand that superintendents are any leaders. We have to be the greatest cheerleaders. Absolutely. And when you said Absolutely. that you, your staff was the best side of heaven, I beg to differ because I think my staff is the oh, best side so, of heaven. So you're like, <laughs> My staff better than your staff. Yeah, that's, exactly. how that. that's, that's, okay. how that. that's how we're going to do that. Okay. That's how we're going to do that. Yeah, but truth be told, um, it, it really is 
that that in itself does an organization make. And so I try to be as candid and um, as upfront as possible with with um, our staff. There is not a person that is not um, vetted. Um, and we actually have, you know, one-on-one conversations. We give scenarios of um, this may happen, what if. Um, and so if you don't do kids, you, this is not a good spot for you. It, 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 it really isn't. Um, if you don't do people, if you don't do team, it's not really a good spot for you because so much of the work that we do is so interrelated and it overlaps. Mm -hmm. So you can't um, kind of jock for position per per, per se, you know, it's all about um, work. uh, It's working together. Um, It's like I said, it's, it's hard work, but it's good work, but we have to collaborate. We have to, um, you know, you have to be able to have that open door policy where you accept input because you may reach one student that I'm not able exactly. to get to. So it, it's 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 no contest or competition. Our goal ultimately at the end of the day is every kid that walked through the door, we want to see them walk across that stage. Absolutely. That that during that, that may or whenever their their time um being and I think it's exciting and it it's what um really gets the kids excited that they could come get caught up on their credit and what we tell them is that if you want to return to your home school and you know participate that's okay. Mm-hmm. Our goal is while you're with us, we have these tasks in front of us and this is what we're having to accomplish and it takes an uh, incredible amount of uh, I guess work and support and systems to you know really make it work and have everyone rowing in the same direction absolutely you talk you talked about systems and we're going to come back to that Mm -hmm. but I want to talk about um before we go to that you spoke about those at-risk students, whereas dropout recovery. But you also talked about we also offer innovation mm-hmm. or we're not the traditional uh, school environment. So speak to speak to okay. that. What does that look like as it relates to your environment, traditional environment for those students? Well, for one, um, our students um, enter and they attend four hours per day. They have an option of a morning session or an afternoon session. Mm-hmm. When a student walks through the door, they have an academic advisor that's assigned to them, and those academic advisors develop deficiency plans based on um, where they have been. It is not uncommon, um, Dr. Ross, for us to have a student who has attended five to six schools within their high school right, career. Right. So we literally have to you know, make records requests piecemeal those transcripts into one mm-hmm. and put all of that within our system, develop a deficiency plan of these are the courses that you're in need of. Um, but also we look at these are the typical kids that if they were in a traditional setting, they would not be targeted for certain opportunities, mm-hmm. i.e. dual credit, Um Certi- career certification pro- mm-hmm. because for one thing many of them they had attendance issues they didn't come to school so they did not have you know an opportunity so what we've had to do is partner with um entities of higher learning um we um we we're partnered with dallas college long star and um lit which is lamar institute of technology and so we have been able to um They've been able to work with us, um, and we found that they have fast-track courses Mm -hmm. that would allow for um, us to align with our nine-week schedule and provide them opportunities to experience success. So you may start off with something um, that's attainable. And when those kids see, I get a college ID, um, I'm able to um, complete this particular course, and they see a transcript. It's a game changer. It yes. has been. 
Yes. You know, for them. And so, you know, we started out strongly with during during that time it was Richland College. But what we've been able to do is, you know, take that that same messaging and, you know, communicate with the other community colleges and um, institutions of higher ed. And they have, you know, really embraced the idea of working with that population of students that, you know, typically didn't even believe that they could go to college. So now they have the opportunity. In addition to that, we um, we have applied and received um, designations as both P-TECH and early college high schools. And so we're just leveraging, what do they say, all the tools in the tool belt. We're right. just trying all toolbox. Those, those we're opportunities. Just, we're just trying to, yes, throw everything in that direction and – what works, we're going to determine what works and keep and keep it moving. Mm-hmm. So we, we talk about um, uh, your particular uh, demographics of students. Um, talk to me about that specifically, the, 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 the demographics that you currently are serving um, across your network, because you have an, actually have a network. So mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. it looks different in each mm-hmm. city or what have you. But talk about, I guess, as the an entire organization, how does what, what are your, your demographics like? In terms of ethnicity? Well, ethnicity, yes. Okay. And, as well as males, females also, if, you, if you're aware of that. I am aware of it. And the funny thing is that um, we have, um, we're, we're about 55% male, Forty five percent. Yeah. For yeah. So I'm that, gonna clap on that. Yay. I know. That is I know. That's amazing. Yeah. That and, is amazing. And then when we look at, you know, the the split we are um we're about forty percent Hispanic, forty mm-hmm. percent African American, um, maybe about um seven percent Anglo and then the rest is other. Okay. So, I mean, we I always so we have a melting pot. Absolutely. And um, l- last year, I believe um, we hit every component. I think we we had we literally had we had Asians, we had Pacific Islanders, we had African Americans, we had you know. So it, it's a gamut, and really strangely, those demographics kind of f- they're fluid throughout all three campuses. Wow. So okay. yeah, so yeah. so so when when planning and that's very helpful to us because although we may be in different communities, what we found is that education is education. You know, reading comprehension is reading comprehension. You know, th- those skills, sure. objectives that, that that's just kind of it's the same. So when we're planning and we're thinking about strategies, that strategy could be deployed. You know, across across the board, across the board mm-hmm. for each community, and we do a lot of um, trial and error. And if it doesn't work, you know, we 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 might abandon it. You know, if it does, we keep moving. And so that I think the flexibility is the key, and um, having um, the ability to to be flexible and know that that's not something that everyone is afforded has really um, helped our organization and helped our students to grow. Right. I think mm-hmm. you and I both have uh, been in the traditional um, ISD or a traditional public school setting, and I think that's why mm-hmm. we have the, the love that we do have for charter public schools is because of that flexibility and that autonomy to be able to switch and meet the needs of those students right. versus um, an agenda or a program or right. Right. something of that sort. It's really um, geared toward uh, that that students and their, their needs or what have you. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. Um, whereas um, our committee may you know, consist of um, myself, the principal, um, the academic advisor, a, a, a teacher that's saying, okay, this isn't working. So it doesn't take a full committee to make changes. Right, yeah, right. That, that, that could. It doesn't hold up the process. Right, it doesn't right. hold up the process. And so, you know, when you think of time, and we don't have a lot of time mm-hmm. when we get our kids in terms of, as I said, we literally enroll half of our population um, the first week of August, three weeks. 
Because we graduate 400. Yeah. And so we're rolling. Which is another Whoop. applause. Right, you know, that's, right. You know, wow, yeah. yes. So, yes. so 350, four, that's our, that's our, that's pretty much our number. But during the pandemic, we were just really excited about that because students, um, they, students that we could not, we did not know their whereabouts. They actually, they, they reached out, you know, we, how, how can we, re-enroll and so we were able to do quite a bit of um who we, we 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 did quite a bit during that time that was amazing just to see how the that that term pivot really um transpired um getting kids um technology um hot spots um computers mm-hmm. to really, you know, move forward, but also having a platform in place to to really get them there. Right. And um, ensuring, and, and then, you know, not only that, but we have, um, our staff, has, they have to facilitate to ensure, um, you know, just the, the integrity mm-hmm. of the, um, the work and that students are, are mastering and demonstrating mastery correctly so it uh i just can't believe it's been two years isn't that something that that's uh, <laughs> that's a whole nother su- oh, subject oh i know i mean I know. we have literally been involved in a pandemic for mm-hmm. two years and being and and being able we should give ourselves uh, a round of applause mm-hmm. all the educators that are out there all the administrators superintendents yeah. um kudos. even our commi- commissioner kudos absolutely uh, for you know bridging the gap doing the work it's hard work but you have to be passionate about the work right you know to make and sh- doing it with grace yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. A, yeah just graceful yeah, not, yeah, not, complaining. not complaining yeah exactly. yeah no, no complaining whining. folk <laughs> not at all uh, you talked about systems and as a leader it's important to have systems in place. Mm -hmm. And um, as a part of this uh, podcast, we definitely want to give leaders or potential leaders the opportunity to hear from professionals like you Mm -hmm. uh, and and around uh, things that you have put in place to Mm -hmm. uh, assure success within your your district. Right. So talk to me about some systems that – you put in place or some challenges that you faced where you had to re-identify mm-hmm. um, changes that may need to occur as a part of your, your systems. Oh Lord, <laughs> we, we could spend some time. <laughs> we could, we could spend a lot of time on that. I mean, you have your accountability systems. Mm-hmm. That's, um, that's key because without um, being able to meet your accountability requirements, you don't keep your doors open. Mm-hmm. Um, you have your funding systems. Fiscal, um, yes. Yes, you mm-hmm. have your um, your data collection systems. That that's a that's a huge thing because when you're taking in um, an anor- when you're taking in the number of students that we take in every year, you have to have a way of really evaluating. Mm-hmm. Is the data really telling the the true story? Because for us, and I'm, you know, quite candid, because we serve dropout recovery, we we get, um, we're, we're always under um, corrective action, pretty much mm-hmm. um, knowing the type of population sure. that we serve. And we're getting a little bit more leniency um, towards that. But it is, it's, it's kind of like, okay, you're still measured the same way. So, therefore, it looks different. But then I'll get individuals that, you know, kind of really studied the data, and they were like, it seems like you guys are a little bit different. And I'm like, yeah, because most of the kids that come to us, they've not received, um, you know, any type of instruction over maybe two to three years. You know, these are some of the things that we're working with, but we're trying to manage them, and we're um, we're trying to um, um, accelerate and remediate at the same time. And so, you know, that's possible. But in terms of um, there has to be just the A, B, C, and D. It's kind of like um, when a, an individual is in debt mm-hmm. and they're just not wanting to face the fact that I am. You right. have to have a starting point. And mm-hmm. for me, what works is just to write it down. Okay. First of all, 
what are we up against? Um, well, even with accountability. Okay, what what's the accountability? What does that look like? Mm-hmm. How do we compare to what that looks like? Mm-hmm. And then begin to really survey what can we do about it? You know, what 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 are some things, you know, you know, what are, what are some causal factors? What are some things that can be that we can't change? You know, the parents are sending us the best that they have. The kids are not changing. So, you know, really digging deep into, you know, those plans and not just um planning for the sake of I'm going to fill something out and then just, you know, submit it, but really having those Absolutely. hard conversations and then involving your staff because Oh my goodness, they can really add insight to what really does take place and can we really do this? And so, you know, I'm not opposed to us trying. Mm-hmm. And so, but, but there's so many areas of focus that you have to have a system for. Absolutely. That it does, it, it, it can become a little overwhelming it sometimes. Can, it can, and but especially you if back. you don't have those systems in yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I couldn't imagine not being able to function, yeah. Without those systems. It, yeah, and, 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 and it's an A, B, C. Sometimes people think, oh, that's a little bit trivial, but no, it it's needed. You can't miss a step. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, Check boxes. Right, <laughs> right. And that 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 doesn't work without you, you. I mean, you have to be so succinct when you're you're developing those systems, mm-hmm. and like you said, you're monitoring to see if they're successful. Oh, absolutely. And what I love that I heard you say is about really data is every, it, it's the guiding force to everything you do with accountability, mm-hmm. with fiscal yeah. administration. Yeah. Um, when you're thinking about attendance issues, yeah. when you're thinking about just across, it's a plethora. Right. You use that information in order to make sound decisions, right? As right. Leaders. To really guide, um, right. guide the process. And as I said, year twenty, I have made so many mistakes in terms of in the beginning, mm-hmm. you know. And so, learning from that and being able to, I think the most important thing is being able to understand that um, you can't do it alone. You, um, you you have to have everyone rowing in the same direction and, you know, in a, in a collaborative manner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you just gave, I meant to you some great advice. Understand that mistakes occur. Oh, absolutely. They, have, have, yeah. they happen. Yeah. But what you need to do is learn from the mistake, mm-hmm. grow yes. from the mistake. Yes. So it will not repeat itself. Identify. Mm-hmm. Rectify. Oh, I love it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and keep moving because it, it's going to happen. We're yes. dealing with human capital. And so errors will occur, but the identify it. Mm-hmm. Rectify the problem. And then, you know, move forward. because And, and, and don't beat yourself up about it because you just can't, um, you know, don't hold yourself hostage to it. You have to identify it and, you know, be confident and say, hey, I stand corrected. Right. Just, I don't think anyone today is looking for perfection. No. But they do look for excellence. And that's a difference. Ooh. Ooh. That was an aha moment. <laughs> mm. Yeah. If if I had a knife, I'd yeah. cut myself yeah. and bleed. Yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, yeah, that's yeah. an aha moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I talk about that with my staff all the time, the spirit of excellence, yeah. whatever I do, yep. you know, even with this podcast. Right. It, it's an it's a extension of myself. Mm-hmm. Who I am, right. how I dress, how I talk, how I right. care of myself. Absolutely. Anything that I do, I want to do with the spirit of excellence mm-hmm. or what have you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I received that uh, quite well. Let's talk about, you mentioned something earlier when we talked about relationships and we, we talked about uh, your staff. Now, with that as the leader, and you talked about human capital as well, but it was re- in reference to students. Mm-hmm. You have, as, as a leader, have to identify the right people to be on your bus. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that as a part of your your district. Right. Talk to me about that process. What does that look like for you when you're identifying staff to work with your particular mm-hmm. demographics of students, those those students that you work with? Well, we first start out with um, identifying what does it take for this particular 
for this position? What does it take? Mm-hmm. What does it involve? What are the job responsibilities? And um, and so posting that. But even with um, our um, recruitment process, our hiring process, that involves a team of, um, you know, individuals that can sort of see what one of the other mm-hmm may not be able to see. Right. And it also involves being very candid that the work isn't easy. Um, the, the the students um, have days, you know, and so and this position may not, you know, we, we always ask, I think this, the question that I ask at the end when we, I said, now hearing everything that we've shared is this something that you feel that you're interested in? Do, do you think that you can do the work? You can, you know, is, is are you up for the task? And um, surprisingly, I've had candidates say everything that you've shared, I appreciate your candor, and I don't think that this would be a good position for me. And I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Me too. I am so okay with it because I feel that um, that I would rather you – not go through the onboarding of everything that would be involved and you be honest and upfront that this might not be the case because there are other educational areas and arenas that you can tap into that may not be as intense. Correct. Yeah. This yeah. is this is the critical care unit. Right, right. Of education right. where we're working with. And so, you know, it does require a little bit more than um, the art of teaching. Right. Yeah. I think what's what's critical, too, what you said about the transparency as a part of that in the interview process. You have to be up front. And I think I I, I, I echo what you say Mm -hmm. as it relates to when I've interviewed. Um, I always say not only are we interviewing you, but you're interviewing us to say, hey, is this going to be the appropriate fit for me? Right. You know. Right. And I think that's 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 that has to happen as a part of that transparency piece has to happen. Um, you've smiled a couple of times throughout the podcast, and I'm going to tell you what I uh, uh, identify when you're talking. And as an educator, if you re- and that's why we've been in the business as long as we have. Yeah. You, it is passion work. Yeah, yeah. And you said you've been doing this at this particular district uh-huh. for 20 years. Right. I want to talk to you now about you, mm-hmm. Cynthia Triggs, personally. Okay. What inspired you to do that type of, uh, the, inspire you to do the work that you do, but more specifically to be the founder and CEO mm-hmm. of this district, you know, to work with these uh, caliber of students and, and do the grunt work, the hard work that has yeah. to be done to assure that these students are successful. It ha- it's truly, it truly has to be a passion. It's not for oh. everybody. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, to be honest, um, I started out thinking that I would go to law school and <laughs> argue <laughs> for life. That would wow. be, that would be mm-hmm. my thing. Um, however, after completing undergraduate school, um, my mother and my grandmother was like, um, any other <laughs> educational experiences, you're on your own. <laughs> and so I paused. Yeah. And I said, and, and I had someone to, and, and literally, while I was in undergrad, I added secondary education as a major. Um just to kind of test the, you know, I, I don't even know why I did it, wow. but because no, my, my family is typically in the healthcare um, industry, and um, I, I I did student teaching, you know, did all of that, and then I received a phone call um, stating that there was a um, position available, a teaching position available um, in my hometown of, of, of Beaumont, and I said, oh, I don't want to apply for that. I'm not interested in teaching. And so I had um, a, a mentor to tell me, you know, I'm a teacher. She was a retired teacher. And she said, you know, when you teach, you're the CEO of your classroom. She said, you, you know, you, you, you have the, um, the leeway to really identify. She said, you, you get what's called a, a, a guide mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and they called them pacing guys and scoping sequence oh, yes, and all of that kind yes. of stuff. Uh-huh. She said, but really, she said, you know, it's outcome based on how your kids are performing. She said, you really should consider, you, you, you should reconsider. And I did. And so I went ahead and I applied and got the position as a ninth grade English teacher. And it was really life changing. I, um, I really got involved. I became, um, I taught um, history. In English. And history was the driving force. Right. And then we incorporated English essential Absolutely. elements at the time. It yes. was a humanities class. Okay. And I loved the project based management. I loved um just I loved English. I loved, you know, really teaching kids how to how to write and how to dissect. And then I had another um Another friend who had graduated as well with me, and she taught reading, and we would team teach. Uh-huh. And we would just, you know, just explore all kind of cool things. And we had kids start to come back a- after they would leave because it was a ninth grade center mm-hmm. that I taught at. And they would come back and they would say, everything that you taught me, we, we're covering that now. We're getting it. And so I was like, oh, I may be pretty good at this. And so for me, then I discovered, I was like, well, I think I kind of like this education thing, but how can I perhaps move in a direction where I'm not just impacting kids, but I'm impacting adults as well? Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did. I went back, I got a master's in education administration, got the mid-management certification, all that went along with that, and um, I landed in um, I landed in a school district that um, that's when I kind of was discovering kid. We have about a thousand kids that are entering ninth grade, yet only three hundred are graduating. Yes. Everyone's not moving. Everyone's yeah. not. You know right. what, what's the deal? Reality. What's going that's on? The reality. Yes, 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 yes. And so I said yeah. to myself, you know what? When I retire. I'm going to open up a school and I'm going to, you know, focus really on those kids that we don't know their whereabouts. I said that and I say I I think I've said this in many interviews. I'm so glad that I didn't wait (laughs) because I don't know if I would have the stamina now (laughs) that I had 20 years ago. And when you think about the students that you've impacted, those 400 plus students yearly that have graduated yeah that would yeah. not have yeah yeah wow that's yeah. a testament to you you know not only being given the vision but making it manifest right and then on a personal level having the support system to do the work because my husband is in corporate america where he said education one plus one doesn't equal two. <laughs> it, they, they are worlds apart. And so, you know, having the support and you know, when I told him what I wanted to do, he was like, well, this is a faith walk. Let's go on it. And really, um, and just my, my daughter, you know, I had, I had, I gave birth to my daughter the year that I started the school. Wow. And so she was literally growing, grown up seeing, you know, the work of the school. And it's so funny um, because she's a super high achiever. So mm-hmm. we would I embark wonder where her. she gets that from. <laughs> so, she, so she and um, a few of her friends, um, they um, became peer tutors one summer. They volunteered. Mm-hmm. And so they were, they really got into it. And um, she's now a physics major and she's added education as a component oh what yeah. a testament to, yeah, to her so, mother and her mentorship that's, yeah that's beautiful. we'll see yeah. we'll see how that how that goes but i've just had a tremendous amount of support but not only that you know growing up um single parent um household um i'm just a little girl from you know beaumont texas that where people paid attention and um so When I think about those who paid attention, it was the educators that really, you know, made made a difference, Um, encouraging, um, just just supportive. And so I've not only had support. I feel like you know, and from my home environment, but in the educational environment. And I think all of that 
together kind of molds you and it, and it and it gives you that inspiration that if I can just help somebody and and really people today they they find it odd that there are no strings attached to many of our kids right. because so many strings have been attached have been. and mm-hmm. you know just the as I said the uh, the trust that they've lost in adults um for me that's something that we wanted to just continue and and just to be effective as possible and so for and you know I told you I don't do the little ones right. as much as you do <laughs> so I was like what better way as they're walking out and they're exiting um this experience as they're you know really transitioning into life we we still should have um you know that that nurture some someone needs to be there to teach and to to share experiences because we do a lot of surveying and I know that when we look at the college and career piece of it, that's, you know, it's a part of accountability, but it's just a part of having good work as well Right. to really have a kid to know that they can, they know what they're going to do or they, they know which direction they're wanting to take. That's very impactful. And so surveying kids and then having that box where they check more than not. I just don't know what I want to do. Mm. I I have no idea. I need help. Guidance. Direction. Guidance. Mm-hmm. Direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and so shame on us if we do, if we do nothing. Absolutely. You know, and we're just talking about working our little corner. You know, because this is a this is a worldly issue. Absolutely. But I feel like if those that are called would work their area. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree one hundred percent. So the, it it definitely takes uh, um, an entrepreneurial mindset to start. Yeah, a I didn't school. think so. I didn't. But you know what? I didn't think that. I didn't really probably think that I was an entrepreneur to maybe about. Probably about 10 years in, I was like, oh, we are entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're socialpreneurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're socialpreneurs. So I heard that term and I was like, That's what that is. That's what we've been doing. But because you're you're absolutely right. Because it's funny when I saw the first charter i think that was maybe a generation three that was the application Which is that, our ch- that was our charter generation three it was like a three yeah. pager or something like yeah. that or so, and so i was a generation seven and so we were that generation i think that we're tried and true everybody kind of like made changes and stuff so mm-hmm. our application packet was like 450 pages or something mm-hmm. like that where we really had to dig in deep but it was a good experience it, it it really was because it teaches you that you have to have the plan built prior to implementation. And it gives you a roadmap. But now if the roadmap changes, and most often it does, you know, you're able to make adjustments. But, yeah. We're entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. When you think about when you think about the definition of an entrepreneur, it's basically and and mentees listen to this. It's a, a entrepreneur is a person that uh, sees a need that hasn't been met. Yeah. And 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 develops something to meet that need. Right. And you saw when you were a teacher. Yeah. There was yeah. a need mm-hmm. where there were a thousand students that started in the ninth grade. And by the time graduation occurred, it was only 300 students that yeah. graduated. Yeah. And that's yeah. when the light bulb, the entrepreneurial Absolutely. spirit, yeah. even though you didn't recognize it then, that's what it was. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what it was. Well, I have, this has been phenomenal. I have yeah. enjoyed the conversation, but I have three questions for you. Final okay. questions as okay. a part of this. Okay. So... As an intentional leader, first of all, what is your definition for intentional leadership? My definition of an intentional leader is to be mindful 
of those that are watching because you never know how you're impacting. Leadership doesn't mean that we're sitting in a row and I'm actually teaching. Mm -hmm. I think individuals are looking at you as you perform your actions daily. Mm -hmm. And so it's being mindful. Yeah, you model the expectation. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What motivates you? My family, my husband, my daughter, my mom. Yeah. And the kids, what really motivates me is knowing that and excited about the possibilities that they didn't know existed. Because many of our kids tell us, I didn't even think that I could graduate. Wow. No one's ever graduated in my household before. And I have that opportunity. Now, if that doesn't motivate an individual, (laughs) or it should. That's deep. That is. That is. Yeah. How do you inspire others? Just by encouraging them and um, knowing that I'm always a text or a phone call and then sometimes a flight away. If need be, being willing to help somebody. And what do you do to transform other mindsets to be aligned to the vision of the school? Education and exposure. Yeah. Professional learning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Development. Yes. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, As always, Mitties, this is Dr. Ross. And we had the pleasure of talking to none other but Superintendent Cynthia Triggs. Thank you so much for coming. And always remember to motivate through self-reflection, inspire others for transformation of their minds in order to meet those desired outcomes. Intentional leadership.